All right, today I'm going to present to you some prerequisite knowledge that you need to know before you start chapter 2.1. All of these will actually be things that you actually covered in sec 2 already. As you can see from these four points here, I'll go through each of them right now. First is satisfying a line equation. What is meant by satisfying a line equation? What is an equation? First and foremost, look at this, y equals to 4x plus 3 is an equation. If you remember, y is a variable, y can take different set of values, and x is also a variable, x can take different values. So for example, when x equals to 1, in this equation, if x equals to 1 over here, what happens is y is equals to 4 times 1 plus 3 my y value is equals to 7. So this means that the coordinate 1, 7 satisfies the equation because when the x value is 1, the corresponding y value is 7. Similarly, if you look here, what if my x value is 3? For my equation, y equals to 4 times 3 plus 3. What I get is y equals to 12 plus 3 y equals to 15 therefore what i can say is the values or this pair of values when x equals to 3 y equals to 15 lies on the line y equals 4x plus 3 another way of saying that this coordinate lies on this line is that it satisfies the equation y equals to 4x plus 3 now, just a quick question, you can pause to think about it. If I were to give you another, what I call, a set of coordinates, what if I had the pair of coordinates 4, 16? Does 4, 16, that means when x equals to 4, y equals to 16, does this pair of coordinates satisfy this equation here? y equals to 4x plus 3. If you're given some thought, actually, if you have done taken out a piece of paper and you went to calculate this, you will actually know that this pair of coordinates does not satisfy the equation. Why not? Okay, if you look here, when my x value equals to 4, for y equals 4x plus 3, so y equals to 4x plus 3. So when my x value is equals to 4, 4 times 4 plus 3, my y value is 19. So therefore, when x equals to 4, I would need a y value of 19 to satisfy this equation. In this case, when the x value is 4, y is 16, this pair of coordinates does not satisfy y equals to 4x plus 3. Now, something from sec 2, how to solve simultaneous linear equations. So here I present to you x plus y equals to 7, 4x minus y equals to 3. The first one that I will show you is how to solve by substitution. I urge you to pay very special attention to solving by substitution because for chapter 2.1, we will be solving it predominantly by using the substitution method. So now let me begin x plus y equals 7, I will label that as equations 1 and equation 2. So if you remember, if I take equation 1, okay, let me make maybe uh, y the uh, subject of the equation. So y is equals to 7 minus x. Let me call that equation 3. I will now substitute equation 3 into equation 2. 4x minus y so i will replace the y with 7 minus x is equals to 3 4x minus 7 plus x is equals to 3 so if i have to quickly solve that 5x is equals to 10 my x value is equals to 2 i will take my x value is equals to 2 and substitute it into maybe my equation 3 so i will say substitute x equals to 2 into equation 3. Hence, my y value is 7 minus 2. My y value itself is 5. So, my solution to this pair of simultaneous linear equations is x equals to 2 
and y is equals to 5. With that, I will solve this same pair of simultaneous linear equations by using the elimination method. So now, over here by elimination, once again, let me label this as equation 1 and this as equation 2. So quite clearly, if you notice, the coefficient of y here is 1y, here is negative 1y. So if you remember from sec 2, what we can do is I take equation 1, I add it to equation 2 itself. What I get is 5x is equal to 10, x is equal to 2. Then what I can do is I substitute x equals to 2 into maybe equation 1 in this case. So what I'll get is 2 plus y is equal to 7. My y value is equal to 5. Hence for my answer, x equals to 2, y equals to 5. I do note that elimination seems to be the easier way out in this case. However, for in solving what we need to do for chapter 2.1, Elimination will likely not work out. You will have to use the substitution method. Okay, now just pause the video here and practice this. Okay, so there are two questions here. So there's the question, this pair over here and this pair over here. So I suggest that you pause the video now. All right, take some time practice okay uh, I would suggest you use the substitution method to solve these two and once you are done with what you have uh, with your practice you can actually uh, press the play button and uh, on the next uh, transition I'll actually show you the answers and these are the answers to the previous two questions that we had if you have issues with this, please check in with your friends or your teachers on actually how to solve this. If you are not able to solve this two questions by the substitution method, I think you will really need some practice right before you attempt what we actually need to do in AMF itself. Okay, now I'm going to move on to part three here, which is the implications to the number of solutions. Okay, so what do I mean by implications? There are certain ways that the uh, graphs can actually what I call uh, intersect or sometimes not intersect. So now I present to you two equations here. So I have the first equation, which is 3x plus 6y equals to 1. That is given by the red line over here. So what I'm going to do here is I will take 3x plus 6y equals to 1 and put it on my grid itself over here. Okay, that's 3x plus 6y is equals to 1. Then, if I were to uh, draw the graph of 7x minus 6y equals to 9, I will find that this will happen. Okay, when you do this right on a set on a grid itself, what you will notice here that if you draw and you are accurate in your drawing, you'll notice that these two linear graphs will actually intersect at the point 1 and negative 1 third. Okay. So therefore, when x equals to 1, y is negative 1 third. So what does this mean? This means that for this set of uh, simultaneous linear equations, this equation, this equation, there is one unique value of x and one unique value of y. So one unique set, in this case of x and y, it means that there's only one solution. One solution, as we have seen when we plot it graphically, there's only one single point where they will actually intersect. Okay, now what happens if we have another pair of equations? So now what I present to you is y equals to 2x and 2y equals to 4x. So first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the graph of y equals to 2x. So when I do that, here, what I get is y is equal to 2x over here. Then, okay, I start to draw the graph of 2y equals to 4x. I plot all my points and all. Hey, I noticed this, that the graph of 2y equals to 4x is exactly on top of y equals to 2x. 
you notice that right they lie exactly on top of each other so what it means that right they will intersect at an infinite number of points okay so for every set of values of x and y that um actually satisfies the equations they will intersect so for example okay one possible set is when x is 1 y is 2 this one okay so when x is 1 2 times 1 is 2 the y value is 2 hey it fits y equals 2x when x is 1 okay over here okay so x is 1 4 times 1 y is 2 here 2 times 2 4 equals to 4 you notice that hey this pair will actually satisfy this equation and this equation then if we just move on and find more uh, what I call uh, pairs one possible pair is maybe when x equals to 10 y equals to 20 similarly if I put it into this equation when my x value is 10 2 times 10 is 20 my y value is 20 it satisfies that equation for this set here, when my x value is 10, 4 times 10 is 40, my y value 2 times 20 also is 40. So you notice I've already given you two pairs. In fact, right, there'll be an infinite number of pairs of x and y okay, along these lines that will actually intersect. So in this case, right, if uh, there is so many solutions, I will say that in this case, it's an infinite number of solutions because each of the graphs actually lie on top of each other. Okay, lastly, what I have here is y equals to x plus 1 and y equals to x plus 3. So if I were to present these on the Cartesian uh, plane, what I have is y equals to x plus 1 is this, and y equals to x plus 3 will be this. If you can observe, both lines are actually parallel to each other. No matter how far you go, okay, how far you go upwards and upwards, these two equations or these two lines will never ever meet so when they never when they don't meet there will never be a pair of x and y values that will satisfy both of them so in this case what i can say is that there are no solutions i move on to the final part uh, of uh, this prerequisites is the expansion of algebraic expressions so just to draw your attention, if you remember what we have done in um, sec 2, I think, a plus b squared, okay, come and say it together with me, a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So in this case, what we have is that the value of a is 2x, and the value of b in this case is y. So if I were to expand this, we just say a squared will be 2x squared, plus 2 times of a, b. a is 2x and b is y and finally plus b squared. So b is y squared. If I expand this, what do I get? Be careful here. The answer here is 4x squared because 2 squared is 4, x squared is x squared. So what I get here is 4x squared plus 2 times 2x gives you 4x 4x times y will give you 4xy and plus y squared. Just like that, I've expanded 2x plus y squared. If you need some refresher of this, do pause the video, think about it a bit. Now, 3y minus 2x squared. So in this case, my a value is 3y my 2x is the b value so just remember if you have forgotten a minus b square is a square minus 2ab plus b square so now very quickly what i have is a square minus 2 ab my a value is 3y my b value is 2x plus b square so it's plus 2x square so what I get here will be 9y square minus 2 times 3y is 6y. 6y times 2x is 12xy. Then 2x square is 4x square. Again, I will say don't be careless. This is 4x square, not 2x square.
Okay, this one, it's something similar to what we have done uh, in the previous two slides. But what we can do here is this. Notice that I'm trying to square uh, a algebraic fraction here. So be very careful. So what you need to do here is to write it out as 3 minus 2x squared over 2 squared. So when I resolve this bracket and this square, the square will be applicable to 3 minus 2x. The square is applicable to the 2 as well. Then what I need to do is simply for the top portion, 3 minus 2x squared, if you remember, a minus b squared is a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. So what I have is a squared minus 2, a is 3, b is 2x plus b squared. Divided by 2 squared is a simple one. This one we can all do this. It is 4. So if I simplify my numerator, what I get is 9 minus 6 times 2 is minus 12x plus 4x squared divided by 4. <clears throat> Please resist the urge from doing something wrong like, hey, here got 4, here got 4. What can I do? I cancel, okay? That is totally wrong, all right? It cannot be simplified further. Just please leave it well alone. Okay, my last example for today. Okay, this I think we have done in the previous part already. Now there's an extra two here. Don't panic, okay? And don't do anything funny or so. It is very wrong to A, 2 and 2. Let's cancel like this, okay? That is wrong, right? and besides, right, the correct uh, word for it is eliminate. Same thing also here. Wow, 2 and 2, let's cancel. You cannot do that as well. Okay, so be very careful. How we expand something like this is to first, we write the 2. Okay, same thing as what we did just now. Just keep calm. Okay, the square is applicable to the numerator. The square is applicable to the denominator as well. So what I have here is... 3 minus 2x square over 2 square. Then, 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 be very careful. There was that 2 here, the 2 here. Where does the 2 go? Does the 2, <coughs> does the 2 go to the numerator or the denominator? In this case, if you remember, this 2 is actually 2 over 1. So, by right, the 2 should belong to the numerator itself. Then, what I can do here is this. Let me just place it nicely first. I expand the top first, the numerator. So, if I expand the numerator here, what I get is uh, this. 9, okay, minus 2 times 3 times 2x. So, it's 6 times 2 minus 12x plus 4x squared. Okay, you, if you find it confusing, better stop for a while. Pause the video and try Make sure you're able to get this to this. These two terms are equivalent. 3 minus 2x squared will give you this term here. Okay, in the denominator itself, 2 squared will give you 4. Oh, now you can do what you enjoy doing. The 2, okay, and the 4. In this case, because they are they separated by these brackets here, this 4 and this 4 cannot be eliminated. However, the 2 and this 4, okay, they can actually interact. So how do they interact? What I can do is, this 2, I eliminate with the 4. I'm left with 2 here and 1. So the simplified expression that I get here is 9 minus 12x plus 4x squared divided by 2. Okay? Okay, now, do pause the video and practice and do try it out okay uh pause down write it out okay in my next slide i will actually show you the answers to itself and then that will be the end of uh, this video itself okay so now i will just write it out with the do pause and try Okay, and these are the answers to the questions I showed you in the previous slide. Uh, if you have any queries with this, please do check in with your AMF teacher on your next lesson itself. 
If not, I hope that you have understood this video uh, and then do check in with your friends and your teachers if there are any further queries. 